Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to go over the Stream Deck and Meld Studio because I did find the Meld Studio application on the Elgato store and I went through everything, checked everything out, figured out how it all worked and I wanted to show you guys how to set it up. So let's check it out. So I'm going to bring it up right here. Right now you can kind of see like where I was and kind of the things that I set up and started messing with and I did all this. But for today, I want to go over here and just kind of set up a fresh tab, just kind of show you guys how it would be easy to set up and just break down what all these do and what exactly you would use them for. So the first one's going to be show scene and a show scene tab. It's basically going to allow you to pick a scene that you want to show when you click the button. So if you have like five scenes and you want to show your just chatting scene, you're going to push your hotkey and it's going to bring you right to your just chatting scene. So let's drag this over. When you click on it, you can give it a title so you can keep track of what's what. And basically what you're going to want to do is then click selection and then just come down here to chat and just click chat, make sure everything's good. And now when I press that chat button, it's going to bring me right up to my chat scene, which again, if you guys are streaming and making videos and recording and need to switch between stuff, Having something like this set up is just going to be a game changer and just take everything to the next level for you because it really does make things so much easier. So let's head back. Let's go back to our desktop display. We'll bring this stream deck back up over here. Before I dive any deeper, real quick, I want to show you guys something that I thought was going to be really, really, really cool that turned out to not work out as well as I expected it to. So. If you look over here, let me take the stream deck down for a second. If you look over here at this ultra gear, let me, uh, let me cover up this stuff. So you guys aren't looking at it all crazy. Let's say I wanted to take a look at this meld studio, right over here on the right hand side, you're going to see the source. So the source right now is actually going to be allowed to be the specific application window, which for obvious reasons, that's going to be friggin' awesome, right? You're going to be able to just click a button over here. You can be able to put YouTube up. So like ready, we put YouTube up. It's going to pop YouTube up. If we pick, you know, Meld Studio, it's going to put Meld Studio back. Now the downside of doing this is that this now becomes a window application capture, which is two dimensional, should you say, right? So what I mean by that is if anything overlays this image, you're not going to be able to see it. So like, let's say I put something over my screen right now. You can't see it because it's only capturing this one plane of its windows tabs or show. Where does that give a problem? When you do something like this and I say, go into help and go to your scroll down and you guys can't see nothing. I ran into that problem when I was trying to do the first video showing the stream deck. And then I realized that you guys couldn't see any of the drop downs that I was picking. So you're going to need to use a display capture for your actual desktop. So let's go back to that. Now, when I click this, since it's capturing the entire desktop display, it doesn't have that like overlay block because it is showing everything that's in your display in the application. It's not going to let you do that. So let me show you what the stream deck looks like. Let's go down to the stream deck. Real quick, let me exit out of that. So right now, if I click on this, it's gonna bring up, hold on, let me pull my stream deck up real quick. So once I click on this right here, you're gonna see this, and now look, you can't see the drop down. So when I say, hey, go down here to your drop down, you're gonna be like, what drop down? So I suggest if you're gonna be doing tutorials and showing stuff on your stream, that you do something like this to where now you can see this. And when I click on these drop downs, you're going to be able to see all the options that you're going to be given. So definitely keep that in mind for your next recording. If you're going to be showing things on YouTube and you want to be able to showcase some of this stuff, same thing goes for this. Sometimes when you hover over this in just the right spot, I'm not quite sure why it does it sometimes and other times it doesn't, but it actually gives you a brief description of what each thing does. There you go. Create a clip of the last 90 seconds. So if you do get it in just the right spot, I guess for just a long enough period of time, it does give you a nice little description. So in case you have any questions on what exactly it does, at least you'll have a little bit of a description there. So that's how you're going to set up your scene. It's pretty simple. You just drag it in, pick the scene that you want it to be, and then just put a title in for it. And obviously you're going to want to name it pretty similar to your scenes so that you can keep track of it. The other thing I have to say about that is I do like to keep them in order 
as they are on the left side in your actual scene so that it's a little easier to kind of coordinate your direction on where you're going. Um, now the screenshot, pretty self-explanatory. You're going to drag it just like you would, but there's going to be no options. The options for this are technically in your preferences. So if you go up here and go to preferences down here at the bottom, you're going to see your local destination. You're going to then select the folder that you want these screenshots to be saved in. So make sure you know where those are at, because I guarantee you've taken a screenshot before and you lost that thing in your computer somewhere and you've never found it. And you're like, I don't even know if I saved it and be like, probably didn't. So as you can see right above this recording, there's also a local destination. For the next thing I'm about to show you, which is clips, make sure you're setting your clips to save in the right spot too, so that you can find them as well. Because sometimes the paths are weird and like that meld recording folder, you might not know where that is. So like hit this browse button, go through your files and actually select the specific spot you want to be able to go back and look for those. So the next thing that we're looking at is going to be the clips and the clips, as you can see, we hovered over that. It does allow you to clip a 90 second clip, which I think is perfect because I don't know how many times I've been on a clip where it's like 30 seconds and I clipped it like 40 seconds late. So I only got like the, the, I missed the first 10 seconds of the clip that I actually wanted. And then it was waste this 90. That's going to allow you to hit 90 seconds. And then you're going to be able to trim off either end and line that clip up just right. So same as the screenshot, there's no options. You can put a title if you want. Since the icons kind of describe what they are, the title is really not required. So you can just click out of those and just leave it with the icons for screenshot and clip. For the scenes though, for the scenes I do recommend putting a title because as you can see, it's much clearer to see your chat and I can see that on my stream deck as well. So the next thing we're looking at is the track mute, which I'm super excited about because when I first looked at meld and I, I didn't know anything about the stream deck app yet, I was just looking at the application of meld by itself and in the hotkeys, I didn't see a toggle mute button. And I was like, Oh man, I need a toggle mute button because my microphone doesn't have like one of those buttons or a touch or anything like that, that lets you mute your mic. And then I found track mute and I was like, that makes more sense because the audio mixer runs on tracks, which is now going to let you pick any track and create a hotkey to mute every specific track that you wanted to. So if you wanted to like make a track mute for Spotify, for Apple music, YouTube, your game, road mic, whatever it is, you're going to be able to slide this track over and it's going to give you these drop downs and it's going to allow you to take this name. So I'm going to do mic. And then I'm going to turn this on because right now my microphone is on. So make sure you check that because then it's going to give you the correct logo of what's actually happening. So if you were to do this, right, let's do it wrong first. So we're going to click this button off. We're going to take, pick our road mic and we're going to leave it on toggle. I like to just push one button for on and off. If you want to set it up, it does give you the option for mute button. And then you can also set up an unmute button for the toggle. Right now I have it set up wrong. So now while I'm talking, it looks like the microphone is off. Now when I mute myself, it's going to look like the microphone is on. It looks like the microphone's on when it's actually muted. And the easiest way to fix that is just clicking this button. If you forget that I told you, you can click this button and you can remember this. If you come down here and hit mute while that's hit that button after you hit mute, it's now going to be back to where it was. So you can either switch it down there at the bottom, or you can switch it by muting your mic and turning it back on with the button and it'll reset itself like that as well. Now the track monitor, I really haven't had any use to need a track monitor hotkey because the only thing that I've really ever used to monitor is the Q button, which track monitor is the Q, right? That's gonna allow you to cue something. And basically what you're gonna to wanna to cue is, is your microphone to make sure that you sound good when you, when you put, put your, your headphones, headphones on. on. You're obviously not gonna to wanna to record or stream with that on because it's gonna sound absolutely terrible. So if anybody ever says, yo, you got a mad echo, there's a chance that that's gonna be one of your main problems or you're in game chat and in this and you have everything going on you have the echo but your good chances are going to be checking that Q tab right there um, but I do use that before I start recording before I do any type of live streaming I cue my microphone check it out make sure everything sounds good and then I go on with my day 
turning that off. So if you want a hotkey just so you can look down to make sure that cue's not on, then that's not a bad idea. You could definitely run it that way. So the next thing is pretty cool. This one's probably my favorite one, which is the layer visibility. And when I was on OBS Studios, I never really even considered it because I never saw the option. I'm sure it's there. I'm sure you have some type of scene visibility or source visibility that you can turn things on and off. The layer visibility in this allows you to pick which scene you want to pick it from. And then once you're in the scene, it lets you pick which layer you want it to be. And then you get to be able to toggle it on and off. So if you say you're on your just chatting scene and you wanted to have a chat screen here and you wanted to have a picture of your dog right here and you wanted to have a timer down here and you wanted to like show your music that you're listening to right here, you could then go in and make a layer visibility hotkey and then pick which one of those you want to be on your hotkey and then you can turn them on and off. Like if you want to just pull up your music for a second, but like, yo, what do you listen to? But like, yeah, check it out. This is what we're listening to. Push your hotkey, your music will pop up and then you can just hit your hotkey and it'll go back away. So it's not up on your screen the whole time. I feel like it's going to be super cool. So let me show you what I was messing around with. This is actually pretty funny. So I thought about what if I started my videos like this? Yo, what's going on guys? Yo, I'm a thumbnail. Like, like just the idea, like you'd be looking like, what the hell is going on here? What, what is he even doing? So I have a hotkey that when I go back here, I can turn the camera off and turn the camera back on. And that's just like one little feature that I was messing around with that I thought was a lot of fun, but it just gave me an idea of like, oh, there's going to be a bunch of cool things that you're going to be able to mess around with this on because you're just going to be able to get so creative with some of the stuff that you do and you can mess around with all kinds of different layers and you could make double buttons and you can do all kinds of cool stuff. So I do look forward to seeing what some people use it for. And then the other thing that we have is going to be a similar effect, but it's going to be effects visibility. So it's going to allow you to do stuff like this and turn your camera to something else or a different effect or any scene. You can change any of the effects that you have by just hitting a hotkey. And I think that that's going to be able to add some cool stuff to your stream as well. And if we want to set that up, we're going to go back to our desktop, open up our stream deck, and then as you can see here, we're going to be effects visibility. Pull that up over wherever you want it. The title, we could name it uh, black and white camera. And then it's going to ask you for the scene, right? So our scene that we want that on is our just chatting scene. The layer that we want that on is going to be our camera layer. And then the effect that we want to toggle on and off is going to be black and white. So the black and white toggle, that button's created. Now when I push that button, I will toggle myself on and off. So we have to go back to the just chatting scene. We push that button. That's the one I already had created. As you can see right here, we have the black and white and it's ready to go and use it however you please. Now the last two, the last two buttons that we have available are going to be record and go live. So for obvious reasons, you probably don't really need to see how to set those up. When you drag those over into your stream deck, there's no options for those. You're just going to push the button and it's going to do what it says. It's going to go live or it's going to start recording. Now, those just make sure that you have your live stream settings set up and then make sure that your records are set up to a folder so that you can make sure that you can find them when you're ready to use them. Other than that, the other thing that I saw was pretty cool, right? So one of the things is the way that the transitions work, you can set up your scenes in order so the transitions look even better, right? So like if we're sitting here and then we go to here, right? That transition is nice, butter, smooth. And then we go over to here, boom, nice, beautiful. And then we can come right back out to here and keep everything flowing the way we want to go. And then if we don't really like being on this side of ourselves because this side of our face is better, we can go back to the original chat scene, which is actually just an inverted version of just chatting left scene. So I do really like that I can go from here to here, back down to here, back up to here, and then come right back out all in like a fluid motion. And I really do think that that's a cool feature. And I really do enjoy how like fluid everything works. Now you can adjust 
how these work. You can go into your preferences and go into your transitions and you can change like what type of movements they are. If you want them to be cuts, if you want them to be fades, if you want them to be morph or any of that kind of stuff. And it's just super cool to mess around with. I haven't even gotten into like a quarter of the features and I'm already having a great time. So I am looking forward to the next update for Meld and I'm really looking forward to see some new features come in that I can utilize because I am really enjoying making my YouTube videos on Meld right now. So that's what I've been doing for the last few weeks is just making my YouTube videos on Meld. And I'm really only using OBS Studios to do live streaming, which I haven't even live streamed on this new channel yet anyway, so it's really not bothering me too much. So maybe by the time that I'm ready to start putting out the first live stream for this channel, Meld Studios will be ready to set up and I'll be over there anyway. So if you want to see other videos like this, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. And then the next video, I think, I think it might get a little spicy because I think we might start talking about follow for follow and support for support streamers and how that trend's got to go. Part of me wants to talk about it. Part of me doesn't. The reason I don't want to talk about this is because I personally think that like maybe it's just a phase that like you have to go through. Like if you didn't if you didn't go through that phase maybe you wouldn't learn something about yourself maybe you wouldn't have learned something about somebody else and you wouldn't grow to the position that you're in now so i just feel like there's like these phases of streaming and i made a comment today because somebody posted something on threads and they were like if you're a new streamer that hasn't been affiliated yet and you have less than 100 followers drop your link to your twitch so we can all follow each other and i was just like god damn it no. So I reposted it with the caption of just like, is there any way we can get this trend to die? Because this fake follow for follow and support for support stuff just isn't going to get you anywhere. And then there's like hate comments on it that people supporting follow for follow. And they were like, tell us you're an unsupportive D bag without telling us. And I was just like, Oh goodness. Yeah. You guys are in that face, but all right, I won't go any I won't go any further into it because I'll save it for the next video. So it's either gonna be about that or I'll dive into the Steel series. Obviously, we're doing both videos. I just don't know which one I'm gonna get into next. But if you want to see the stuff on the follow for follow, then just drop a comment. Just put follow for follow in the chat at the bottom, and uh, we'll just make a video on that tomorrow or something because I'm like really excited to talk about it because I don't know why, but I just love it. So. If you guys understand where I'm coming from, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So peace out, guys, and be sure to look out for that next video. Later.